afterward. So this is after I've gone through the history and the analysis of Mulholland Drive. Making Mulholland Drive the story of a unique, albeit tragic, character is how David Lynch salvaged the Mulholland Drive TV pilot. Lynch understood that for the story to have meaning, to connect with audiences on a visceral level, to have the power to move us emotionally, it had to have a human being at its core. When we watch Mulholland Drive for the first time, we don't know we're seeing a story told through a dreaming mind. We don't realize we're witnessing the reflections of a troubled psyche. Only at the end of the film, in Act 3, do we become aware of the larger story at play. By then, and especially if we're watching the film in the theater, it's too late to go back and untangle Diane's dream to see how it conveys her various anxieties and desires. But when we rewatch Mulholland Drive, we evaluate it with different context. We read Mulholland Drive's first act as a dream, and we see a deliberate scheme at play. The construction of the film, the arrangement of and transition between scenes, the use of sound and music, the movement of the camera, encodes Diane's fear, guilt, and objection. A sense of desperation permeates the whole of it, implying a mind behind the story. Hidden in its discursive shadows, masterly interpolated by David Lynch, Diane Selwyn is a presence throughout. Mulholland Drive puts forth a puzzle, and it's up to us to put the pieces together. Daunting and elusive, haunting and elusive, Mulholland Drive opens minds. <laughs> I hope many people will read it, and I'm sure those who do will enjoy it. And I hope to hear, I personally hope to hear from people who are currently reading the book or, or who have read it. And uh, because if you like this book and you like this writer, we'll probably get along. So 